Good morning. Welcome to Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad you've joined us this morning. Later in the service, we'll be celebrating the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so we invite you to have your communion elements ready. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come, let us worship our living God. Let us join in our prayer of confession. God, who provides for our, our every need, you have given us countless gifts. You have welcomed us for all of who we are. Oh God, we continue to trust ourselves more than we trust you. We fail to embrace others as you have embraced us. Be our glory and our strength for days to come. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. From Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Children's Sermon. So today, I got to tell you, I, we do a lot of these online worship services, and I'm so glad that you're here every single Sunday. But sometimes, some Sundays, I get super hungry while we're doing online worship. Is anybody else like smack in the middle of Sunday morning? So 
this morning I figured like, well, why not just go for a breakfast sandwich? So I got myself a breakfast sandwich this morning. I'm going to eat it right now. So I got all my fixings. I got my, got my salt and pepper ready to go for my breakfast sandwich. I got my, my hot sauce because I like them a little spicy. Uh, I got my, oh, this is my imaginary iced coffee. Look at that. So delicious. Mm, so good. All right. I even got my little, uh, you know, just so I don't, I usually tend to go like all in. So I got my little towel here. So let me just, I'm just going to dig in on this sucker. Wait a minute. Wait, where's my, I, I got the whole brick. Oh my goodness. I forgot the breakfast sandwich. What the heck? I had all my fixings. I had my, my hot sauce, my salt and pepper. My, I was ready to go. <sighs> Silly me. I forgot the darn sandwich. I can't believe this. I was so prepared and ready. Like this is like, I was going to, oh, darn it. You know, sometimes I feel as though in life we forget maybe the main thing or the one thing that might be the most important. In today's other reading today, we're going to learn a story about when Jesus was traveling with his disciples and a kind uh, pair of sisters put them up for the night. Their names were Martha and Mary. And when they accepted Jesus and the disciples in, they're like, all right, we're going to like make dinner and prepare all the things and set the table and make sure you have a place to sleep. It's going to be great. And one sister like went to town trying to make all these preparations. That was, that was Martha. And then the other sister, Mary, just wanted to sit and learn and, and listen to what everything that Jesus had to say. Uh, she was so interested in just spending time with him. And so we learned from the story. Um, what happens is that Martha makes one choice to try to get prepared and Mary makes the choice just to be with Jesus. And at one point, Martha comes in and says, hey, Jesus, my sister's sitting with you, but I'm getting all the food ready. Can you tell her to get her act together and get in the kitchen and help her out with all these things I got to do? And Jesus says, hold on, Martha. Your sister is actually doing the one thing that is the better thing. And that's not going to be taken away from her. So what's the lesson? Sometimes we make all these preparations in life or we have distractions, right? There's lots of things we want to do or accomplish or things that we love doing. And they, sometimes they're great things. They're good things. They're loving things. But sometimes they distract us. And we're like when we're doing our studies or extracurriculars or spending time with friends or ticking and talking and or Instagramming or whatever all these things are, spreading good and, and love in the world sometimes. But sometimes we forget that we need to come back to Jesus and do some learning and some listening and maybe even some studying of some of the stories he's shared or, or messages that he's tried to teach us. Because without those, here we are ready for our breakfast sandwich and there is no breakfast sandwich. So today, I pray that we can remember to do good things, but remember the one thing, which is make sure to spend time with Jesus and listen for his message and learn and continue to learn all the things that he wants to share with us. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, sometimes we are so prepared for that amazing breakfast sandwich. We got all the amazing things, but we forget the sandwich itself. This week, we pray that you can help us to rededicate our time, even if it's just five minutes in the morning or 10 minutes at night, uh, to just be reflective and thoughtful and praying or learning from, from your stories in the Bible or just connecting with you in some way, shape or form, Lord. That is the way. And we just want to make sure that we forget or that we don't forget that's one thing and continue to learn and listen for you. Lord, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity as you do every day. In your name we say, Amen. Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart.
welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Whenever this passage comes up in the lectionary, I remember an evening worship service we did at the church I served as a solo pastor in Sussex, New Jersey, back in the 90s. It was an experimental kind of service where the music was different. We didn't have any musicians, so we played the music on a CD player, which felt very modern at the time. Some of the youth had come together to learn the songs and were ready to lead the singing. One of the songs was a version of the psalm that we just read as the deer. We were in a different room from our usual space with a table in the middle, not a traditional communion table, but very plain and round and still serving as a centerpiece of worship. There was communion on the table and we also had a pitcher of water with a bunch of little cups. And after I read this passage from Matthew 10 about giving a cup of cold water, one of the young people got up and poured a glass of water, and then they took the glass of water and gave it to the first person on the left. Now, it was a very hot day, and the person was very happy to drink it right away. When we had talked and planned the service, we wondered what would happen next, and we were prepared to have the leaders serve everyone. But without prompting, the person who had been given the water got up and poured a glass, and gave it to the next person in the row. And it went on like that until all the people in the room had a glass of water to drink. There may have been other words, but that was the sermon that evening and is one that still speaks to me today. There is a spirit of welcoming that undergirds everything we do in the name of Jesus. Every way that we serve says everyone is welcome here all the time. And when we welcome people with our hands and with our hearts, with our words and with our generosity of spirit, we feel the spirit of Jesus alive in us. This week in this country, we celebrate Independence Day in memory of a time when people declared their independence and their freedom. Their desire to do and be a new thing, a new place, create a new path in the world. Independence can be a wonderful thing, worthy of celebration. And yet I also want to celebrate that as Christians, as people of faith, we are interdependent. We need each other. We need to be welcomed into community. Sometimes we need to be given a cup of cold water. Sometimes we need to be the one pouring the water and sharing it with the people in the room. Certainly we need to be people who come together and connect around the sacrament, celebrating the body and blood of Christ that was given for us in love of us. Friends, we come together this day because the love of Christ proclaimed to us that we are welcomed into the family of God that God's love transcends all barriers. May we know now and forever that the love of Christ is for us. And may we be agents of welcoming everyone we meet into the good news of the love of Christ through our words and through our actions, through the spirit that lives and breathes through us. In Jesus' name, amen.
We are welcome to this table by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we invite you, wherever you are, to share in this communion meal today. For they shall come from the north and the south, the east and the west, to feast at this table, the great banquet of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We celebrate the gift of life and give thanks that you are working in the world and you are working in the church throughout the world. We give thanks for the gift of your son, for Jesus. We are filled with gratitude for his love for us, his sacrifice for us. We remember him in this meal. Knowing that on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we pray that in this feast, we may be united wherever we are in communion with all the faithful in heaven and across the earth. We pray for those in need this day, those who are hungry, those who need shelter, those who are living in the midst of danger and violence and war. We pray for those who are ill and those who grieve. May we be instruments of your peace and love and hope in all that we do, in all that we are. We pray that we might be nourished through this meal, this foretaste of the great banquet of the kingdom of God. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful as Christ's body, representing Christ and doing God's work in the world. Bind us with Christ and with each other. And let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken in love of us, the cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood poured out in love of us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do pray and give thanks. We pray that the gifts that we've been given in this communion this day might nurture and nourish our souls, that all that we do, we might do in your name. Amen.
us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. walk with me I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey I want Jesus to walk with me in my trial I'm in trouble.